What's up, YouTube? Welcome. We're going to have ourselves a drink up here in the mountain because it's part 21 of Horizon Forbidden West with a therapist. It brings me so much pleasure to know that so many of you have been following this series as we've been going through it. I have now come to understand that Horizon is not as popular of a series as I thought. So I'm loving the hell out of it, and I'm so glad that so many of you are enjoying it. Um, but it's been kind of fascinating to see that this is not a series that does particularly well in spaces like TikTok and stuff. So uh, I'm glad that you are. It makes me all the more glad that you're hanging out and that you are making the effort to watch this. So we're going to come in hot here with our conversation with Aaron, as promised. Before I do that, I ask, as always, that you leave a like on this video, that you leave a comment if you feel so inclined, and that you tell your friends about it. Also, you should follow the links down in the description. Listen to my music. Buy some merch. You know, fun stuff like that. All right. Let's see what Aaron's got to say. This ought to be really interesting. Pizza? Apparently, it tastes worse the longer it takes to be delivered. Or something like that. Maybe you can find the recipe? <laughs> I think it was just flat bread with cheese and some sauce. I like it already. Yeah, dude. Pizza. It's interesting how much is archived in these, though. Because, like, you know, Apollo theoretically had all this info. Aloy, we've gathered some supplies in that chest. Take what you need. I think politics stay the same no matter how much time passes. Hey. Hey. A yeah, nice place. Well, it's not like I built it or anything. Right. Well, I can see why you, uh, why you had your doubts about bringing us along. It is a lot to take in. We are off to a great start. We're off to a great start. Uh, I'm going to hyperanalyze these interactions between Aloy and Aaron almost always because they are so rich and fruitful. If you recall, many, many episodes now, when Aaron was sitting on the cart and was having a nice conversation with Aloy before she went through the big gates. Aaron made several attempts to vulnerabilize himself. One of the most sophisticated ways that you can inject vulnerability, but also validate and open somebody else up to joining you in that vulnerability is to think about empathy for that person when they're not around. So Aaron comes to the mountain, puts a focus in, starts taking it all in with Varl and Zoe's instructions and goes, oh my God. This is a lot. And instead of just getting soaked up in his own subjective experience, which would be totally okay if he did, he then thinks to himself, no wonder Aloy wanted to go out on her own. This is way too much to have to disseminate to the masses, let alone to me and my thick skull, because he still has the self-esteem stuff going on. But for him to lead with that, to be like, hey, this is a lot. Now I understand why you wanted to go it alone because this is, man, you were really trying to look out for us. That's a huge piece of empathy shot in the direction of Aloy. And I really hope that Aloy takes that well because this is Aaron yet again being vulnerable to a person who has hurt him quite a bit. 
Well, let's see how this goes. I would hope that Aloy's response here is, yeah, it is a lot, and I appreciate that, and I'm also glad you're here, because that would be an acknowledgement of the importance of his presence, and also the acknowledgement of her emerging understanding that she can't do this by herself. But, uh, don't worry. <laughs> There's nothing I can't handle. Right. Okay. I see Varl gave you a focus. Well, it doesn't look as you know, fashionable on me, but by the forge, the things I've been able to see. Granted, a lot of them are bad, you know, the old world ending and such. I'm still trying to wrap my head around most of it, but I never really understood how you were ever able to find my sister back in the Sundom. And now I do, sort of. It makes me feel like I could be useful, you know? It takes some time, but yeah. This dude's in it. I love it. I really do. Here's an opportunity for me to possibly be useful in the ways that you've been useful to people. And what I really love too is that he doesn't discount that Aloy was still involved in that process. Like he didn't say like, you know, it was the focus that did all the work, not you. Uh, what? Now I don't... You, screw you, I don't need you now. I gotta focus. I don't need you, Aloy. You just reverse Uno card. Take it. Oh, he's like, yeah, this seems like a pretty useful tool. I'd like to help people with it, too. And I'm beginning to understand you better. Now. Again, the tricky part about this, friends, is you have to look at these things dynamically and reciprocally. You can't just look at this as being an errand thing. Aloy is here, too. And the more that Aaron comes to understand Aloy, the more there is an emerging intimacy there. Even if it, and I don't mean intimacy in the sense of like romantic interest. I mean intimacy in the sense of like closeness because now Aaron is seeing things that Aloy once saw. He's beginning to understand her. He is, seems to be quite open to the intimacy that comes along with that. That may be tough for Aloy. Is again, Aloy has done a really good job of being able to maintain a gap between her and other people based on knowledge and based on her adapt adaptation to the technology that she uses. Well, now all of a sudden you have Aaron using the technology, understanding how you do the things you do. Well, that's intimate. And if Aloy is averse to that, there's going to be a lot of dissonance she experiences where she's like, man, this is cool that you guys are in on this, but ooh, this is starting to feel very close to me. I don't know how to find my differentiation now. Other than I'm a leader and I'm Elizabeth Sobek, and we might see her lean pretty hard into that as a means to maintain that autonomy if she's going to try to keep the equilibrium of I don't want to be too close to anybody. We'll see if I'm right on that. I guess you know what we're up against by now. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. When Varl first told me those bastards come from the stars, I thought he'd eaten too many of those medicinal berries. Yeah, but I've gotten used to seeing impossible things, thanks to you. I just wish they weren't always trying to kill us. Yeah, you and me both. Mm-hmm. How are you settling in? Yeah, Varl's been helping me get the lay of the land, when he's not getting all tongue-tied. I don't know who makes him more nervous, that Gaia lady or our new Utaru friend. Well, what about the Vanguard? Aren't you supposed to be back east, ordering them around? I sent some of them back to Meridian with a message. I doubt Avad will mind me sticking around to help the savior of Meridian. So Talana came by the base? Yeah, more like rushed through. I was hoping she'd stay for a drink at least. Only Karja I've ever met who's any fun. But it seemed like she had more pressing matters to attend to. I have to go. I guess it's back to reading. Yay. Reading. What did I miss? So. Do you have time to talk? I do. Oh, whoops. You said you set out to fight the Karja alone? I did. But it turned out I wasn't the only one. News of my disagreement with the chorus spread through the plains. Before I knew it, I had more than a dozen Utaru warriors ready to follow me into battle. We knew we couldn't take on the Karja armies head-on. 
But we also knew the lay of the land better than they did. We ambushed smaller raiding parties, sabotaged their supply lines, and hit their encampments at night. Sounds like you were a force to be reckoned with. Enough that the Tanakh took notice. When the clans began to push the Karja back east, they let us join their ranks. We chased the enemy all the way to Baron Light. You said you were at Baron Light when the Tanakh defeated the Karja? Tanakh marshals climbed the cliffs of the Daunt under cover of night, then attacked from the other side. Before we knew it, the gates were open and the full force of the clans burst through. What happened next was... not something I like to remember. When all the dust and blood settled, I smelled it again. The stench of burnt flesh. Our enemies defeated. What was left of my squad returned to the Utaru Plains. I went back to Plainsong. But even as the harvest passed, it didn't feel like I'd truly returned at all. Is that when you became a grave singer? I thought soothing the suffering of others would somehow appease my own. Then you came along and gave me a choice. I could either sing at people's graves or fight for a chance to keep them alive. I'm glad you chose the latter. I should go. So she's pretty hardcore. The fields bloom a plenty. I wonder Varl's into her. I mean, she's got, she's got some edge. Got some, she's got a past. She's not some like, you know, pacifist Itaru. <coughs> oh, Gaia! I've got something for you. Welcome back, Aloy. Thank you, When you're Gaia. ready, please merge Poseidon with me. Afterwards, I must discuss an important matter with you. Cool. I'm going to do this first. There we go. More data for the dome. Error. Drone offline. Error. Drone feed disconnected. Oh. Do this one. Whatever it is, it's the one we'll live with. They just make the dome look a certain way. It's just pretty scenery here. Yeah. Alright. In we go. What did you want to discuss? While you were away, I received an unusual transmission on my dedicated Aluthia frequency. Aluthia? That's one of the subfunctions you couldn't detect before. Yes. The transmission occurred so slowly that at first it seemed like an accidental blip of data amongst background static. Once I noticed this irregularity, it took some time to collate the complete message. Where does it lead? To a mountain to the northwest of this facility. A word of caution, Aloy. It is possible this transmission is genuine. It is also possible it is being broadcast by someone 
or something else. You don't think it's actually a Lucia? Silence. I am uncertain. What's SOS? It is an old world code. A distress signal. A desperate plea for help. You said the coordinates lead to a mountain to the northwest. What's there? I have no record of anything of note in that vicinity. Okay, and what about the other number in the message? 237. Any idea what that means? I have queried my available databases, but it does not appear to have any significance. Perhaps its meaning can only be understood at the indicated coordinates. Why would Eleuthia send a coded transmission on a frequency only the two of you can communicate on? I believe it was done as a precaution to avoid detection, or at least to create the appearance of the desire to do so. I am also uncertain why Eleuthia would expect that I would be able to detect and respond to its distress signal at all. As far as it is aware, I no longer function. Okay, so... Either Eleuthia is in trouble, and sent the message hoping you were out there... ...or someone else is trying to get us to go to these coordinates, pretending to be Eleuthia. That is my conclusion as well. Could the Zeniths be sending the transmission? According to the data I reviewed on your focus, the Zeniths recovered the other Gaia root kernel in the Hades Proving Lab. It is feasible they used it to gain access to my internal frequencies. So... Maybe they sent it thinking you'd respond, and reveal your location. Possibly. However, the transmission is highly irregular. If they intended to provoke me into revealing myself, I would expect the communication to be more routine. Right. So maybe it's not them, then. All right, I'll go to the coordinates and check out the source of the transmission. All by yourself? Ha! No way. I included Erin and Varl in this briefing via the voices. I concur that you should not investigate this alone. Oh, what if it's a trap? Of course it could be a trap. But if it really is Eleuthia, then it's in trouble, and I need to bring it back. Don't worry. I'll be careful and... We're coming with you. Fine. Go grab your things. We'll wait for you at the west exit, in case you need to upgrade your gear. Boy, you're gonna... You're gonna, you're gonna have friends go with you whether you like it or not, Aloy. Whether she wanted it or not. Check it out when I can. Gotta go after Aluthia. Oh. And Laurel are waiting for me at the west exit. So I have to do this. Okay. Huh. Looks like someone's rearranged stuff in here. Aloy, I see you found your room. Your companions thought you would appreciate a private space of your own. I was thoughtful of them. Yeah, look at that. 
I've been carrying Elizabeth's pendant with me for months. But since we're gonna stay a while, I think I'll keep it here, where it'll be safe. Elizabeth put all of her faith in Gaia. And Gaia put all of her faith in me. If I can do it all, recover the subfunctions, defeat Farzineth, heal the world. I'd like to think Elizabeth would be proud. My old spear. Rust helped me make it. And I finished my training. Feels like so long ago now. When Varl found me after the Hades Proving Lab, I thought I saw Rost. I don't think he'd understand any of this. Or what I have to do. But still. Wish he was here. You'd find a way. This is the rite of passage that Vashav gave me at the embassy. I liked him. He seemed like a good man. I think he was really looking forward to going home. Urgalo's attack at the embassy. The marshals ambushed and surrounded, killed one by one. Reminds me of the massacre at the Proving. Back in the sacred lands. So many lives wasted. And for what? All right. Well. There she is. You ready to head out? Let's go. Look at us. Three battle-hardened badasses forging into the unknown. This ought to be good. Varl knows what's up. Oh, cool. It's going to take me directly there. Love it. Uh, this distress call had to be up a really steep mountain, huh? I see Hephaestus purple. Takes the keg. Burl, see if there's anything over there. On it. We'll check out the battlefield. Let's start with that zenith. It's the zenith die. There's oh shit! Oh, there are obviously more zeniths than we know about. I can't believe you fought one of them. Almost didn't make it. Whatever the rebels did, it took down her shield. But why was she here? I can access her last communication file, but... I'll use my focus to scan the battlefield, too. What about that crazy weapon the Zenith had? 
It looked like she can make it come and go at will. But it's gone now. Yeah. Well, go do your thing. I'll wait here. You've left the Sundom in search. Man, I hate how cumbersome this is. Where is it? What? Hello, Verbena. What do you have for me? I checked everywhere. Still no sign of the asset. Can we call off this pointless search already? Let's not forget who let it slip away in the first place. Now, I'd like to see results by nightfall. Do you think you can manage that? Hold on. I think I see something. Okay. Mm Yeah, what is this thing? Is this a geth? The specter had instructions to assist recovery of the asset. I wonder what this asset is. Spectre Unit X9K4.16-N3, orders received. Prime Directive, assist recovery of the assets. Secondary Directive, continue monitoring V. Sutter. Orders acknowledged. Status report sent to G. Vieri. Hostiles detected, engaging targets, danger, system failure, and meet. Data corrupted. What a mess. Hmm. Draymond, thanks for the eight months. with a focus looks like he was sending data on the weapons somewhere else telemetry initiated coordinates redacted malfunction detected self-destruct initiated telemetry terminated Ooh. Ah. Ah. weapon's still hot it's on fire Aloy I need to know how it worked but I'll have to check on it once it's cooled off. It's on fire, Aloy. It'll pass. But you gotta, like, give it a minute. Oh, it's so hot! It's like when I was in Boy Scouts, and we kicked the cooking grate off the fire, and then immediately after told one of the kids in the troop who was standing right there when we kicked the grate off the fire, said, hey, dude, why don't you grab that and move it over there? And he freaking reached out and grabbed it and then got second-degree burns on his hands. He literally watched us kick it out of the fire. And then he grabbed it after we said grab it and take it over there. Didn't realize Aloy was going to be based off of one of my... Uh, fellow scouts. Looks like the rebels camped here for a while. Are they watching this area? All right. I think I have an idea what happened here. I better get back to Erend.
Hold on one second, friends. Alright, she who sees the unseen. What did you find out? This was a carefully planned attack. I found camping gear up there. The rebels must have been staking out this place for at least a few days. They were waiting for the Zeniths to show up. All so that they could test that weapon. The Zeniths have a personal shield that makes them invulnerable, but somehow the weapon got rid of it. The Osirum that was operating it was sending data on it somewhere else. It was probably just a prototype. I need it! I need it! I've known tinkers that do that. I'd do a little trial run before breaking out the real thing. Well, I guess it's still a work in progress. If it blew up. She was searching for something she lost. Her drone had instructions to recover something called the Asset. The asset? Is that the, uh, sub-function thing that you said could be here? The Luthia? I'm not sure. Come on, let's go talk to Varl. If something tells me that that technology is gonna be necessary... ...for me to beat some Zenith people. What's your take on Aloy's personality? Uh, that it exists? Personality is a moving target. I don't really, I mean, Aloy is Aloy, and... That's a long way down. Something Whoa. tunneled straight down into the mountain. Looks recent. Whatever it was, it must have been powerful. That zenith the rebels killed was looking for something called the asset. I don't know what it is, but my guess is it's somewhere down there. All right, so we head down. Erend, stay here and stand watch. That zenith isn't the only one of its kind. I don't want to be caught by surprise if the others show up. Contact us by focus if you see anything. Okay. If any trouble shows up, I'll call you. Let's go. He's my bouncer. All right, Varl. Jugger, thanks for the three years, dude. Oh, baby. Let's go! Grab your hang glider, Varl. Oh, wait. There's some kind of old world ruin down here. You said the Zeniths have their own backup of Gaia, right? Yeah, from the Proving Lab. So maybe they were after Eleuthia. Found its hiding spot, so it sent the distress signal. Maybe. like some kind of data center. I might be able to access the facility systems from that console. The hell is... Oh, boy. I've never seen a transmitter like this before. Looks like it's self-destructed. We are out of our depth here. This was a Farzenith research lab. 
It looks like a lot of data was beamcast from here recently. From that device nearby. So Eleuthia is gone? If it was ever here, then probably. Only then one why would Zia still searching for it, the asset? Let's keep looking around. Oh boy, you're assuming that the asset is Eleuthia. It could be anything. It could be me, it could be other Elizabeth, it could be... We have no idea. We, I, we can't even like pretend to know the motivations here. Mm. So, exploring another far zenith ruin. At least this one doesn't seem to have giant killer machines. Or anything you can blow up. Why don't we take it easy, guys? We, we just got here. Plenty of fun stuff possible. But give me lore. Give me juicy, tasty, yummy, delicious lore, please. That's what I want more of. big facility all this stuff wonder what they were doing here well knowing far zenith probably discovering amazing things for their own benefit yeah that sounds about right it's almost like it's what we're doing everybody's just trying to survive man I'm sure Zenith has their reasons for doing what they're doing. We just don't like it because we're part of the process. It's like maybe if we could talk about it, we might be able to figure some shit out. Yo, Fourth Wall HQ, thanks for the raid. What's up? Thank you so much for bringing people over here. Those of you that are coming along with Fourth Wall, if you don't know who I am, I'm Dr. Mick. I'm a proud fourth wall partner. I'm also a licensed therapist, PhD in human development. You're watching Game Sessions with a Therapist where we play cool games, talk about mental health, psychology, therapy, and more in an effort to destigmatize those things and bring information to people who wouldn't otherwise have it in a responsible and ethical way. I play popular games like Horizon Forbidden West and I analyze it using my therapy brain. So if that sounds interesting to you, I encourage you to stick around and hang out and check out my merch store, which is powered by fourth wall because they're awesome. Thank you, friends. I appreciate you bringing some people over here. I hope you had a great stream. Oh, uh, this is a spoiler-free, backseat-free run of Horizon Forbidden West, so please don't spoil anything if you're new here. Thank you. Dude, I hate when there's so many places I could go. I'm always worried I'm going to activate the wrong cutscene. <laughs> All these chests in here. There we go. Priority shift from Song Zhao <coughs> to the research to the research staff. Subject priority shift. All. As you will undoubtedly have heard by now, we've lost the brightest star among us. Research on ectogenesis for the Odyssey was near and dear to Peter, and on behalf of the new High Council, I commend you all for your efforts and the great strides made over the last several years. Yet as we mourn our founder, we must also keep our gaze on the bright future ahead. To that end, we will be shifting project priorities. Over the coming days, you will be briefed on exciting developments in longevity research from our Tokyo and Lagos facilities, with new assignments to follow. In the meantime, all ectogenetic chambers should be moved to storage. Refer to your leads with any questions. Sounds like there's some fishy stuff going on. Find anything that might tell us what the asset is? I don't think so. Progress report. 
Text log, data corruption partial, August 19th, 2064. <clears throat> data corrupted. Has seen a significant improvement, decreasing the time between touch-ups that commercially available treatments like Osmanthus's rejuvenagine require. As for Malik's team, the latest results from their neurophysiology experiments seem promising. And with the supplementary data provided by our Tokyo facility, we seem to be closing in on functional first-generation implants. Meanwhile, our friends in Zurich have sent over their findings on WBE. Mixed results. A couple of promising avenues, but anything bordering on real digital transcendence looks to be decades away, if not data corrupted. Fourth Wall just gifted a You Matter Premium hoodie to chat. Yo, if you want a free hoodie on behalf of Fourth Wall, exclamation point, enter. Get in there. Tell yourself and other people you matter when you put on a super comfy sweatshirt. Fourth Wall, thanks for gifting that hoodie. That's super generous of you. And if you're watching this on YouTube, go check out my merch store and you'll see what was just gifted. It's pretty badass. It's also why you should be here live, because cool stuff happens over here. Thank you, Fourth Wall. Hmm. Okay, I now I know where I am. Took me a second. This place is huge. Some kind of storage room, maybe. Maybe the asset is in here somewhere. If it is, somehow the Zenith couldn't find it. Let's look around. So, um, how is Erend taking all of this, really? Well, Gaia, the Zeniths, the Focus, it's a lot. But when I caught up to him in the Daunt and said you needed our help, he dropped everything and turned around. Well, he's loyal. That's for sure. So, I am of... There are, there are two ways that you can process Aloy's question to Varl there. And I'm not going to claim that either one is better or worse than the other, but I'm going to give people some food for thought here. It's totally common for people to ask not the person they're asking about how that person is doing. So for Aloy to go to Varl and say, how is Aaron actually doing? And trying to get an answer out of him. Some may think if you've watched other playthroughs of mine that i'm gonna say don't triangulate that's triangulation aloy it kind of is i mean it is in the sense that like aloy is not approaching aaron directly like if she really wanted to know how aaron's doing she could ask him however i think that aloy is acknowledging to herself that Aaron may not let on fully to her, given the nature of their relationship. So asking Varl how Aaron is doing, if she intends to use that information to engage more effectively with Aaron, is okay. If Aloy is trying to gather that information as a way to avoid interactions with Aaron, that's not okay, and it puts too much undue pressure on Varl to keep her informed about something that she could be asking Aaron about directly. And Varl would be well within his rights here if he wanted to, to say, you know, you should really ask Aaron to that. I don't feel comfortable sharing that with you. And he'd be well within, the, like, I would totally respect that if that was something that he said. But this is not a instance where I would say Aloy should never do that. You just need to know why you're asking these questions about somebody else to somebody. Is it because you want to use that information to address something directly with that other person? Or is it because you want to avoid getting it from the horse's mouth? Important distinction.
There's grapple points in here. Something tells me we're going to be fighting something in this room. This also has a very distinct Destiny vibe to it. A control console to access the storage units. Can it tell us if the asset is in one of them? Well, let's find out. Congratulations, Flux. I do find it weird when they like put random rooms like that and they don't actually give you anything to like there's no lore in there there's no reward for the exploration 236 containers in storage please enter the container number you'd like to retrieve 236 wasn't there a number in the distress signal you're right i should check the log Dude, this, uh, this is, I get so frustrated by this. This is where this gets really tedious. Like, give me the prompt so I can pull it up. It was in the distress signal. These are so poorly laid out. Anybody remember what it was so I don't have to look it up? Ugh. Thank you. 236 containers in storage. Please enter the container number you'd like to retreat. It says there's 236, but I can put in 237. That's me. Aloy. It's you. Skin's like ice. Must have cut this from her head. But why? I'd be so careful with that shit. Are you kidding me? Spit. Uh, apologies, I don't know what else to call you. Um, my name is Beta. I'm afraid I, I must be brief. I only have a few minutes before my keepers discover I'm missing, and I still need to remove this implant. I had hoped to find shelter with you, but if you're viewing this, I, I may be dead. Be careful when you take on Farsiness. They are ruthless, and they have Aluthia, Artemis, and Apollo now. Mm. You must succeed. Oh, this was all for nothing. Good luck. And goodbye. So she's... She's still alive. We need to get her back to... Oh, shit. They can fly. Aloy. Aloy, can, can you hear me through this thing? What's going on, Erend? Two of those spectra things just fell out of the sky. One of them is heading down towards you. The other one's waiting up here. We're coming up. Stay in cover until I get there. You got it. Get her to cover in that room. Whatever happens, she stays with us. I'll protect her. 
I should prepare before the Spectre gets here. I can't let it get through to Varl and the clone. Varl and the clone. Ba, 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 ba. Ba 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 da ba 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 Here it comes! Faro! Faro! Faro in the clone! Ba 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 It looks like a advanced Horus! Ooh, ugly one, aren't you? Advanced Ferrobot. See if it has any weak spots. Oh, that thing's quick. I'm heading up top. Stay down here with the clone for now. Got it. I'll follow once the coast is clear. Something bad gonna happen. Something bad's gonna happen. <laughs> it didn't seem that bad. It's because I'm an elite gamer. Gotta get back up top and deal with that other specter. It's because I this. Just hope Aaron stays in cover. I'm playing this on the hardest mode and I'm making it look like child's play because I'm elite. Seals in. It's got me pinned down. Hang tight. I'm almost there. Just hurry. I gotta read this first, though, Aaron. No, I don't. Okay. Up through the hole. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, that doesn't sound good. I gotta get to Aaron. Let's go. Ooh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Warcraft jumps. Let's go. Aaron, I'm here. My job. That thing Whoa! Down. Shields down. I love this thing's vulnerable to bow and arrows. The most sophisticated sciencey shit here. ever. I'm there. And I'm just like, yeah, bow and arrow ought to do it. Where'd you go? Here we go. And there no. went. You are no match for my primitive technology. Now this is why I came along. This is pod racing. You want me to hit you again? Oh, I heard that crunch from here. You? Look, I swear I'm not drunk, but right now I'm seeing double. Long story, but it'll have to wait. She needs a healer, but we need to get her back to the base immediately. Right. Yeah. 
Well, what are we waiting for, then? You two go on ahead. I need to take another look at that weapon. Now that it cooled off. If I can figure out how that thing works, maybe the Zenus won't be so invincible after all. Apparently, you just shoot him with bow and arrow. I'll stash this away for later. Oh, you can't walk in that stuff. Copper corruption. to get the weapon fragment to Gaia to analyze. If we can replicate it, maybe we'll have a way to defeat the Zenith. I should check on the clone too. Burl, where's our guest? We're in the maintenance corridor below the control room. Okay. Has anybody seen one of my machine strike pieces around? Why don't you check the cache? Maybe you left it there when you dropped off all that ale. Oh. Hope it didn't get stained. Who could laugh at a time like this? All right. Aloy, you're back. Yeah, I'm just uh, checking up on how everyone's doing. You mean after meeting someone who looks exactly like you, but isn't you down in the basement? Guess this must be even stranger for you than it is for us, huh? A little. <laughs> Varl said she may be able to help us in our mission, though. Maybe. Oh god, this presupposes that I talked to her already. I didn't. This is very weird. What else have you been up to? I've been studying Gaia's seedlings, the subfunctions. I wanted to understand why one of them would do what they did to Fa. Imagine my surprise when I looked into this Hephaestus and found out it helped create all machines, our land gods included. In a way, the Utaru owe Hephaestus our whole way of life as well as our current troubles. That's why we have to make Gaia whole again. It's a very subtle but interesting cognitive maintenance of equilibrium. And it speaks to just how like seeped steeped in our like dynamics societally and relationally that we are so zoe gets all of this profound information about the creation of the machines and is willing to take it in and be like whoa okay so there's this thing called hephaestus and hephaestus creates the machines, which includes the gods that we used to praise. So she is essentially acknowledging the limitations of their religious doctrine because she's been presented with information that shows, you know, like the origin of it and shows that it's more dynamic. And then she says, so that means that we really owe all of this to Hephaestus, which in some ways is true. Like it is true that they... They worship machines, and machines were created by Hephaestus. But at the risk of being a little bit, like, linguistically nitpicky and possibly diving deeper than is necessary here, I think it also shows the need for the Utaru to have some sort of powerful deity to attribute their existence to. Like, they've gotten so wrapped up in the idea that there is this like creator and that that creator is worthy of recognition and worship and appreciation that even when their current or like Zoe's current understanding of that process is shaken she immediately says oh they're still like god it's just we were looking at the wrong god 
which maintains an equilibrium of there is an all-knowing, all-powerful thing that created this stuff and is worth devoting, like, some spirituality toward. Now, she might have just been saying, like, stating the fact, but based on, like, the way the Utaru function, it wouldn't surprise me if that was, like, a little kind of, like, cognitive jump to equilibrium, which is something that all of us do. I mean, the reason that I point this out is because we get so used to the way things are, even if we don't like them, but especially if we do like them, that it's actually hard for us to step outside of our own boxes. Like, we do very much have a tendency as humans to just move a process into a different space but keep the pro keep the process similar because it's what we can anticipate. So when you ask people to change, whether it's behaviorally or whether it's like their cognitive boxes or their spiritual doctrines or whatever, it's way more complicated than you think because it's, in this case, Zoe just sort of like shifted that same process to something else, if that's what she did. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. Varl looks pretty focused. He's been obsessing over the data revealed to us by Poseidon. Just the other day, we read about mountains hiding deep underwater that spew fire. If I understand correctly, Gaia said the flames they release come from the very center of the Earth. Like a heart beating with the life of the world. As always, the cycle can be found in even the most unlikely of places. Of course... Varl's mostly interested in watching explosions happen underwater. You said you met Beta? Varl mentioned she was hurt. I thought I'd offer her an extract to soothe the pain. That was kind of you. I just hope she doesn't plan on staying burrowed down there like that. She looks like she's barely seen the light of day as it is. <laughs> I introduced a foreign extract from a planet that she's not from to try to heal her. Hopefully it doesn't kill her due to allergic reaction because her body's not ready for what the Earth has to offer. I need to get going. <laughs> May the land bloom in your steps. <laughs> I rubbed this herb on it from a planet Aloy, she hasn't been on. There are more supplies in the chest. Help yourself. Man, you guys really hooked me up. All right, uh... Let's go talk to Varl before I talk to Aaron. So the old ones painted their faces with something called. Aloy, glad you made it back okay. What's going on, buddy boy? She panicked after waking up and stumbled down here. I thought it best to wait for you. I'll talk to her. Let's put her in the creepiest room. It's, uh, it's Beta, right? My name's Aloy. What's wrong? Is it your injury? Simulacrum withdrawal syndrome. I don't understand. Sudden removal of a neurologically integrated data device. The brain, especially the cerebellum, goes into a kind of sensory freefall. Everything real feels unreal, distant. Is there anything that can help? Do you have a focus to spare? It's it's primitive, but I can make it work. <laughs> yeah. Booting up. So, Aloy, I suppose you want information about you and the Zeniths? Yeah. Why are they here? What do they want? How did they get you? Let's try it again, Aloy. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha. 
Oh, oh man. Oh, I get it. It's just it's like oh god. Like this is so this is so Aloy, the way that she's handling this. Um, again, it's all rooted in how she was socialized. Like it's very like it's very easy to just look at Aloy and be like Jesus, slow down. And we, and I think that's cor the correct way to to look at it, but. Uh, let's take a second and understand a little bit about why Aloy is doing this before we shift into how she could handle this different. And I'm going to repeat something that I think I've talked about a couple times throughout Zero Dawn and, For and Forbidden West, but this is where it's so important. It's so important to understand people's context. We have two people on the screen right now. We have Aloy, who we have followed with in some form or fashion since childhood. And then we have Beta, who we know nothing about. Nothing. Just because she's a clone doesn't mean that she is the same person as Aloy. Because nurture is absolutely going to have an effect. And we have no idea what kind of environmental reinforcement mechanisms have led beta to be who and what she is okay so we don't know anything about her but we do know something about Aloy and it's what makes this really fascinating Aloy grew up with very little socialization there were not many opportunities for Aloy to learn how to be socially adept to engage with various faux pas and then kind of learn from them. Like, she just hasn't had a chance to really do that. She's been doing it in her adulthood as we've been going on throughout this world, but she still has done that pretty sparingly because she wants to do things by herself. It's a lot easier for her to operate that way. And during the times in which she did not have a lot of socialization outside of Rost, one of the things that she was most focused on was her mission which was to learn about who her mom was. So she built this ridiculous work ethic. She gathered information. She pushed herself. Her entire existence relied upon her mission and her directive. She didn't have time to learn how to be socially adept. Why would she? It would be a waste of time if what she has to do is beat the proving and then gets in and all that. Like, it's a figure it out later kind of deal. So the reason I say this is because when Aloy gets access to Beta, sees that Beta's not injured, sees that she can communicate with Beta, and then knows that Beta has information that could potentially help her on her own mission, she's not going to take the time to consider the social dynamics present in this moment. She's gonna ask her a million questions. She's going to be mission focused because that's how Aloy has learned to orient herself to the world, including new people. It doesn't change the fact that it's very jarring. And if you're beta, you're probably like, whoa, sister, why don't you chill out for a second here? It's not a good look. It's not a useful way of engaging with her, but it is an understandable one based on Aloy's context. And what's really fascinating about this conversation that we're about to watch is that because we don't have the same level of insight into Beta's origins and the way that we do Aloy's, we are infinitely we are we are more likely to give Aloy the benefit of the doubt or be more critical toward her than we are Beta, because we still have to feel Beta out. We aren't going to understand her behaviors and her orientation to Aloy in context, which is why the way that you would really want to start this conversation if you're Aloy is to just say, this must be trippy for you as well, huh? It's nice to meet you. I'm Aloy. Is there anything I can do or any questions I can answer from you to help you understand where you are, what you're doing right now before I pepper you with questions? Because I kind of want to get to know who you are first. That would be the better way to go. Because then you start to get more contextual information that makes a conversation with her that much more meaningful. But Aloy is so mission focused. She blows right through whatever kind of desirable social dynamics we would want in this scene. And just asks 30 questions as soon as Beta says, you must have questions. 
She's like, ooh, validation. Boom. Go. So, again, I just use this as a chance to illustrate the ways in which we can use people's learned experiences and their, like, family of origin and environmental context to understand their behavior in a given moment. I think this was really not great approach by Aloy, but it is understandable why she did it the way that she did. Thank you. But let's start at the beginning. I'm guessing they faked the destruction of their ship a thousand years ago? That seems consistent with their behavior, they wouldn't want to be followed. So far, Zenith established a colony world after all. Yes, for a few hundred years, but it didn't last. Some sort of natural disaster rendered it uninhabitable. Okay, so... The descendants of Far Zenith escaped a dying planet, and now they want to claim Earth for themselves? Not their descendants. What? Not their descendants, it, it, it's them. The same ones who left Earth a thousand years ago you didn't know? How can they still be alive? They don't even look... What did they do to themselves? I believe it's a combination of pharmaceutical cellular treatments and technological implants. And, and you? Does that mean that you're... I'm not like them. I was made. On the way to Earth. On the ship. I spent years studying in my training interface. All so that I could serve my function. Access and control of the terraforming system. But why? What do the Zeniths want with it? When I discovered the Zero Dawn system had disseminated into its subcomponents, I thought my purpose was to fix it. But I don't think the Zeniths want that at all. I think they want to wipe Earth clean and start over. Poo boy, howdy. Ugh. Well, again, I'm not trying to be Mr. Cynic here, but we got to take all this with a grain of salt. Like, I want to believe her, and I, to the extent that I can, I trust her. But we don't know the whole story. We don't know the whole story. Uh, uh, if I'm trying to protect my own survival and my own needs, which Aloy absolutely should do, you can't just unconditionally, well, you could, but you shouldn't just unconditionally trust everything Beta says here. Because Beta could be just as much a pawn to get information extracted from Aloy as anything else. Like, you have to be careful in these moments. I don't know anything about her. Now, if we take what she says as true, <laughs> that's some whack-ass shit, right? Like, they... They... I, I'm i assuming what they want to do is essentially hijack a full Gaia and take it back to the planet that they were at and terraform it and then live there. Or... They all want to come back to Earth and have control over it and start their own thing with that. But... It's really fascinating stuff here that we're engaging with. Obviously. Um, my guess is that if they share the exact same genetics, that Beta and Aloy are going to have similar temperament. Not necessarily going to have similar orientation to the environment, but their, like, you know, relative calmness, their... their kind of racking up of intensity as they engage with language and stuff. That's going to be consistent between the two of them, which I think is going to help them build a rapport and be able to engage in the way that they are right now. Uh, but the body language, I mean, yeah, it, it, Beta's in a completely foreign area. It'd be like if Aloy woke up, I mean, she kind of did as a baby, like woke up in a spaceship and then all of a sudden was on a planet she didn't understand with a directive that she only has... The information from the people that gave it to her to decide. The interesting parallel here between Aloy and Beta is that Beta appears to be critical of the orders that she's been given and thinks about them, which is really kind of cool to see, that they both possess this orientation to question what they've been told to do rather than just unconditionally accept it, which I think is neat. All right, let's learn about you first. Better to start with her before we start with the mission, because if we start with her, then it gives an indication that we actually care about who she is, more so than just the information she can provide. You said you were born on the way to Earth. 
In an artificial womb, I'm guessing? The Zeniths had an ectogenic chamber aboard the ship. An updated version of the one you found me in. They must have used a stored sample of Elizabeth's DNA. I doubt Elizabeth would have let them take her DNA. Do you know how they got it? That wasn't part of the archive I was allowed to access. She also appears to be quite a bit younger. You said you spent years studying in a training interface. Was this archive you mentioned part of that? But only the parts I was permitted to access. Aristotle and Aspasia, the, the avatars of the archive, would assign me learning modules and evaluate my progress. Wait, those names? They were designed to be the virtual guides for the Apollo database before Ted Pharaoh purged it. The Zeniths have a copy. So it still exists. And you got to learn from it. Only what was deemed pertinent to the mission. Yeah! Which was always going to be the dangerous part of Apollo. Is whoever could control that flow of information could use it to their advantage. So, yay, human nature. If I requested information outside of my parameters, my tutors would deny it. To have all that knowledge just out of reach must have been frustrating. Beautiful example of empathy right there. For those of you that have asked me questions over and over again of how do I empathize with people, Aloy just gave an, ex an exemplary Exam. Aloy just gave a fantastic example. Aloy has experienced Apollo being at her fingertips and not being able to access it, but more than anything, like Aloy is consistently in a state of needing more information in order to have a better understanding of what's going on in her world. She doesn't have an exact one-to-one -one comparison here. But what Aloy decides to do there is she accesses that archive of experience, no pun intended. And instead of saying to Beta, you know, I've experienced that too. I, one time I went into the mountain and Apollo was supposed to be there, but like it was corrupted and it didn't work. So like, I totally get you, sister. Or, you know, there's this guy named Silence who has this information I keep chasing after and he won't give it to me. Blah, blah, blah. She doesn't do that. She doesn't like one up it. She doesn't make it about her. Instead, she says, well, what has that experience in my past been like when I stood in front of an Apollo terminal and couldn't access it? When I had a conversation with Silence and he didn't give me what I was looking for. That was frustrating. The experience that you just told me about was very similar in terms of process. So that must be frustrating for you too. And so then, in, again, Aloy then looks at Beta and says... Well, man, having all that information at your fingertips must be frustrating. Which makes it about Beta. And you see Beta respond well to that. That's sophisticated empathy. You don't share your specific scenarios that line up with it. You don't make it about you. You ask yourself, how did I or would I feel... If I was in a similar circumstance, and then you reflect that to the person that has shared something with you. Very nice. Very small, but very nice. How did you escape the Zeniths? Before the Hades Proving Lab, I never thought I'd get away from them. Even if I were to run, I'd never survive on my own in the wilds. But then I saw you. And I thought that maybe you could help me. So when the Zeniths pinpointed Eleuthia's location in the biomedical research facility, I saw an opportunity. You said you saw an opportunity to escape when you went to capture Eleuthia. What did you do, exactly? Whenever I was taken out on a mission to recover a subordinate function, only one of the Zeniths would go with me. The one the rebels killed, outside the facility. But Banus dead? How did they bypass her shield? I'm looking into it, but you were talking about your escape? Well, when it was time to use the Zenith's transmitter to send Eleuthia back to base, I also sent the encrypted transmission. Then I distracted Verbena long enough to seal myself in the ectogenic chamber, 
Altering the facility's logs so it appeared that there were only 236 containers. And the Gaia root kernel? I told them I could capture Luthia faster if I had it with me, and they... believed me. Well done. So we're dealing with the same far zenith people who once lived on Earth. What else do you know about them? They were some of the most affluent and powerful people on Earth. They controlled almost every major resource, every industry. Gerard commands them. He's the one who decided to set up a base. The others, Eric, Tilda, Verbena, they resent his authority over them, but in the end, they always do what he says. Eric, he's the one I fought back in the Hades Proving Lab. He enjoys hurting people. Yeah. I know. Yeah, they're not not my favorite group of people. You mentioned the Xenus set up a base <clears throat> here on Earth. Where is it? Off the coast, I think. Whenever I had to go on missions, I was transported inside of a Spectre drone. I couldn't see anything outside. But I did overhear the Zeniths talking about it once. They were discussing setting up a perimeter energy shield to Repel the local fauna. I'm certain they have other security measures. Spectre patrols, machine lures, it... It must be impregnable. What's inside the base? Launch facilities, so they can shuttle back and forth to their ship in orbit. Plus, infrastructure to gather materials and fabricate anything they need. Are there more Zeniths than the ones you met? I'm not sure. I, I suppose there must be more of them in the base or back on the ship. For all I know, there could be more of them out in space. Other survivors of the colony. You said the Zenith's colony in the Sirius system was destroyed. What happened? All I was ever told was that a natural disaster forced them to leave Sirius. I've speculated that it was an extrasolar object or a cataclysmic seismic event. Or maybe even an abnormally violent coronal mass ejection from Sirius A. The Zeniths never told you any details. They said the only thing that mattered was that they survived. First Earth, a thousand years ago, and then Sirius. I guess they survived old age, too. So the Zeniths want to exterminate life on Earth. That's what Guy and I concluded, too. But why? Why kill everyone just to take over? Mm -hmm. When they took me on missions with them, I saw how they... butchered the tribal people we encountered. They didn't seem to care about a rejuvenated Earth, so... I concluded that they must want a hard reboot of the system. Then they can redesign it to be exactly what they want. Mass extinction for their own comfort? Who thinks like that? If that doesn't hit close to home. Oh, baby. Well, without their Gaia kernel, they'll have a hard time doing that. The Zenus needed Elizabeth's gene print to access Zero Dawn facilities. So they made you. Trained you. And you went along with it? They told me I was born to interfere. Whoa! Aloy! Whoa! Whoa! Oh! Okay. Okay. Uh, Aloy's uh, value for fighting against the system is uh, uh this is why when we talk about privilege we to some extent talk about like relative privilege like a aloy didn't exactly have it great growing up but she did have the opportunity to push against the system that was actively oppressing her to blame beta for going along with it oh boy that is victim blaming up the wazoo Beta didn't know any different. You grow up on a ship and the only people that you are around are cultivating a certain understanding of your world and are biasing all of your values and your perceptions and everything else. Like, of course you're going to go along with it. Beta probably didn't know any different until her brain got to a point where she could critically think. 
And even then, she's lucky that she accessed that and it wasn't completely beat out of her. And maybe it was. I mean, when she talks about that dude being super violent, we, for all we know, he could have been violent toward her. That was, uh, that's a... I, I, I get that it may have come from a space of frustration because this is essentially like... There's so much going on here. Like, Beta is essentially a proxy for Far Zenith. So even though Beta appears to be an ally to us... I think Aloy still sees Beta as being associated as one of them, and because she can't access Far Zenith, there's this piece of frustration that sits here that she is unfortunately throwing onto Beta instead of onto where it should be. And so when she says, and you went along with it, I think that's her just expressing frustration of the fact that these people even did this in the first place and put her in a position to go along with it. But she really misses the forest or the tree on that. Where it's like, dude, Aloy, like, this is a person who, if they were pawned like this and weren't really given much autonomy and were very specifically curated in one direction, you're lucky you're even having this conversation with her right now. And to blame her for what she was subjected to while she was developing, yikes. I mean, it's... To use an extreme example, it's essentially the same process as if Beta had said she was raped and Aloy was like, and you went along with it? You didn't fight back? Like, it's it's just, it's like, whoa, dude. Like, the, the, no, 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 no. So, whatever it is that's spinning around for Aloy and her frustration by this, she has to be mindful not to not to do that because it completely misses the mark and has the potential to really shatter whatever kind of rapport she's been building with Beta here while she's been talking with her. Not great. Remember, Beta isn't Elizabeth Sobek even more than, any more than Aloy is. They're not Elizabeth. And the fact that they're clones of her has essentially biased their identity into believing that they're supposed to be her and they're not like if Aloy decided she just wanted to be a Nora and like hang out and weave baskets for a living that would be totally fine it'd be just as legitimate if she became the world savior it's the same thing with Beta like Beta isn't responsible for upholding a legacy just because she's the clone it's essentially like a it's like a parent who was going to go pro in sports and then didn't make it and then has a kid and then like expects that their kid is supposed to live out their legacy and then is totally shitty to them when they aren't really interested in it or aren't as good. Like you don't, they don't have to, Beta and Aloy don't have to uphold this legacy if they don't want to. Face with the Zero Dawn system. When we reached Earth, I pieced together what must have happened to Gaia and her subordinate functions. That's when I started to realize I wasn't meant to fix Gaia. That they must have made me so I could do what their remote extinction signal failed to do. Reboot Earth for their own benefit. So you know about the extinction signal? It was speculation, but the only logical conclusion why Gaia suddenly self-destructed after operating efficiently for centuries. Gaia would have only undertaken such a desperate course of action if it had detected a threat to life on Earth that was more dangerous than ceasing function altogether. I should have realized that she would also order the recreation of Elizabeth Sobek to rebuild her. Yeah, well, surprise. Get some sleep. All right, I think that's enough for now. Do you want to come upstairs or so? How long? You know your your, your plan. How long before Gaius fabricated a machine army to defeat the Zenus? How did you know optimal strategy? So, well, I still have to get two more subordinate functions before Gaius powerful enough to absorb Hephaestus. What? You don't have Hephaestus already? Guy is still figuring out how to capture it. It's not confined to a single- To a single location, of course not! Gosh! Oh! This is, this is what I was talking about. When I said that they have similar temperament, temperament is genetically loaded. Like, temperament is one of the things that you, like, absolutely can, like, pass along. And theoretically, if you're cloned, you might have a similar temperament. Okay? So, 
This absolutely makes sense. This is consistent with what we would expect. Not guaranteed, but absolutely to be expected. This is similar temperament between the two of them. And now they have to decide like kind of how they're now going to navigate it. But it's really hilarious to watch Beta do it in her own way. We've seen Aloy do this before. It's all temperament. It's not personality. It's not identity. It's not any of that. It's just temperament. How excitable are you? by the environment and by certain things that you pick up from the environment. How how exposed are you to emotional intensity? What's your likelihood that you're likely to sort of like engage with physiological arousal, emote it, etc. Like that's all temperament. Very cool to see that. A, a tip of the hat to Gorilla on that. Also the voice actress, absolutely killing it. You didn't even know who the Zenus really are. You were supposed to be further along by now. Coming here was a mistake. They're going to find me. They're going to find this place and take me back. This was all for nothing. They're not going to find us. Guy is using Minerva to mask our location. What difference does it make? You're too far behind. We're never going to beat them. Everything. Everyone. They're going to die. Hey. Yeah, that's a... Panic attack. Duh, Dr. Big. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about panic attacks, I recommend that you watch my video on panic attacks here on YouTube. Uh, pretty well represented here. And I want to dissect a bit of the pieces of what make it what it is. You'll notice that none of the panic attack is driven by known variables it's all driven by what ifs the only known variable that beta actually has here is that as far as she can tell aloy and the people of earth are behind that's a fact behind is she it's a relative term but we'll take it as a fact like they're behind they haven't met whatever expectation beta had that is not what's going to induce a panic attack because that's concrete. You can, you can absolutely observe that. You can confirm it, etc. The panic attack comes from her spinning her wheels on the what-ifs and the possibilities and what she perceives as the possible implications of the things she knows. So she pivots into unknown variables but treats them as if they're known. And so as that physiological arousal now goes up and she engages with what ifs, she also has to engage with answers. Well, the answers aren't necessarily true. They're just things she's coming up with. And she's coming up with worst case scenarios because she wants to prepare for worst case scenarios or have some anticipation of what's going on because anxiety is all about unknown. So you want things to become known. Well, now she starts thinking really fast. She starts getting short of breath. She starts asking a bunch of what if questions. Those what ifs start to feel more real because they're rooted in a funnel point of we're behind and she starts getting all the implications and now she thinks she understands the reality of what's coming even though she doesn't and she's panicking. She is no longer present, which is essentially what a panic attack does. It takes people out of the present. You start getting into a whole bunch of future what ifs. And it's so important to understand that when you're in that space, you aren't working with actual variables. You are working with your own perceptions. You are working with unknowns and things you couldn't possibly predict. Even if it's a 98% chance it could happen, there's still a 2% chance it can't or won't. So this is why when we have a panic attack, one of the first things that a therapist or anybody adept enough to attend to it is going to do is they're going to try to bring you into the present by grounding you, by getting you back into appreciating known variables via your senses, feeling your feet on the floor, feeling the cold air go into your lungs, seeing the pretty lights on the servers in this room, hearing the sounds of the metal. What do you smell? Perhaps Aloy touches 
her arm. You wouldn't want to do that if you don't know her. But like if it's somebody you know and they say physical touch is okay, that can be a great thing to do to ground somebody. But you need to bring them back to the present so they can start attending to the known variables. And then what decisions are immediately in front of them instead of trying to attend to all the what ifs that you're spinning into. So the more that you build up a preventative measure for panic attacks, which isn't stop yourself from having one, it's building up a trust in yourself to ground yourself if you have them, that's what's going to prevent them. They happen, they really suck when they happen, but if you can sort of have that plan and understanding of what they are, you can find certain strategies that work uh, for you in order to get yourself grounded and back into the moment. What you don't want to do is what Aloy just did and say, calm down. In my entire life, of all the panic attacks I've seen, the words calm down have never stopped a panic attack. So don't say it. Calm down. You're here now, right? So is there anything you can do to help? Not I terrible. Sets. And given your state of progress, expertise you probably lack. Geoengineering, of course. Computer science, physics, biology, chemistry. Boom. Okay, so, I mean, that was, like, not great, but Aloy's not a therapist, so she doesn't have to be perfect, but see what I mean? Aloy brought her back to the present. What can you do now? And it brings her back into thinking about the known variables she has to work with, and we see her calming down. So, there is... It could have been worse. Yes. Absolutely could have been worse. Okay. Well, see if you can do something with that. Talk to Gaia. I'll check on you later. How'd it go? Her injury's not that bad, but I think she regrets coming here. Feeling might be mutual. Hmm. I'll come back later and talk to her. See if I can learn anything. I should get the weapon fragment to Gaia. Whew! We'll get that weapon fragment to Gaia in part 22. What an episode. Didn't have that on my bingo card. Uh, thank you all for watching this video and for hanging out with me. Whether you were watching this live on Twitch or whether you're watching the VOD on YouTube, it means a great deal to me that you are willing to follow these videos and indulge my analysis. I don't claim to be right all the time. I'm just giving you my perspective. I hope you find it meaningful and that you continue to find it meaningful and that you will jump over to part 22. Leave a like, leave a comment, check the links in the description, listen to my music, all that fun stuff. Uh, and uh, tell your friends about these streams. If you are binging, I will see you right away over in part 22. If you're waiting for the next one to come out, we'll get it out to you as soon as we can. You all are awesome. I will see you in the next one.